Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. 1 Samuel chapter 14. One day, Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. But he didn't tell his father. Saul was staying on the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree in Migron. With him were about 600 men, among whom was Ahijah, who was wearing an ephod. He was a son of Ichabod's brother, Ahitub, son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh. No one was aware that Jonathan had left. On each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff. One was called Bozes and the other Shina. One cliff stood to the north toward Michmash, the other toward the south toward Gibba. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. Go ahead. I'm with you, heart and soul. Jonathan said, Come on then, we will cross over toward them and let them see us. If they say to us, Wait there until we come to you, we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, we will climb up, because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistine outpost. Look, said the Philistines, the Hebrews are crawling out of their holes that they were hiding in. The men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, Come up to us, and we will teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Jonathan climbed up, using his hands and feet, with his armor bearer right behind him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area of about a half an acre. Then panic struck the whole army, those in the camp and field, and those in the outposts and raiding parties, and the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. Saul's lookouts at Gibeah and Benjamin saw the army melting away in all directions. Then Saul said to the men who were with him, Muster the forces and see who has left us. When they did, it was Jonathan and his armor bearer who were not there. Saul said to Ahijah, Bring the ark of God. At that time, it was with the Israelites. While Saul was talking to the priest, the tumult of the Philistine camp increased more and more. So Saul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all of his men assembled and went to battle. They found the Philistines in total confusion, striking each other with their swords. Those Hebrews, who had previously been with the Philistines and had gone up with them to their camp, went over to the Israelites, who were with Saul and Jonathan. When all the Israelites, who had hidden in the hill country of Ephraim, heard that the Philistines were on the run, they joined the battle in hot pursuit. So on that day, the Lord saved Israel, and the battle moved beyond beth Aven. Now the Israelites were in distress that day, because Saul had bound the people under oath, saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food before the evening comes, before I have avenged myself on my enemies. So none of the troops tasted food. The entire army entered the woods, and there was honey on the ground. When they went into the woods, they saw the honey oozing out, yet no one put his hand to his mouth because they feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard that his father had bound the people with an oath. So he reached out the end of his staff that was in his hand and dipped it in the honeycomb. He raised his hand to his mouth, and his eyes brightened. Then one of the soldiers told him, Your father bound the army under a strict oath, saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food today. That's why the men are faint. Jonathan said, My father has made trouble for the country. See how my eyes brightened when I tasted a little of this honey? 
How much better it would have been if the men had eaten today some of the plunder that they took from their enemies. Would not the slaughter of the Philistines been even greater? That day, after the Israelites had struck down the Philistines from Michmash to Ajalon, they were exhausted. They pounced on the plunder, and taking sheep, cattle, and calves, they butchered them on the ground and ate them together with the blood. Then someone said to Saul, Look, the men are sinning against the Lord by eating meat that has blood in it. You have broken faith, he said. Roll a large stone over here at once. Then he said, Go out among the men and tell them, Each of you bring me your cattle and sheep and slaughter them here and eat them. Do not sin against the Lord by eating meat with blood still in it. So everyone brought his ox that night and slaughtered it there. Then Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first time he had done this. Saul said, Let us go down and pursue the Philistines by night and plunder them till dawn, and let us not leave one of them alive. Do whatever seems best to you, they replied. But the priest said, Let us inquire of God here. So Saul asked God, Shall I go down and pursue the Philistines? Will you give them into Israel's hand? But God did not answer him that day. Saul therefore said, Come here, all of you who are leaders of the army, and let us find out what sin has been committed today. As surely as the Lord who rescues Israel lives, even if the guilt lies with my son Jonathan, he must die. But not one of them said a word. Saul then said to all the Israelites, You stand over there. I and Jonathan, my son, will stand over here. Do what seems best to you, they replied. Then Saul prayed to the Lord, the God of Israel. Why have you not answered your servant today? If the fault is in me or my son Jonathan, respond with Urim. But if the men of Israel are at fault, respond with Thuman. Jonathan and Saul were taken by Lot, and the men were cleared. Saul said, Cast the lot between me and Jonathan my son. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what you have done. So Jonathan told him, I tasted a little honey with the end of my staff, and now must I die? Saul said, May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if you do not die, Jonathan. But the men said to Saul, Should Jonathan die? He who has brought this great deliverance in Israel? Never. As surely as the Lord lives, not a hair of his head will fall to the ground, for he did this today with God's help. So the men rescued Jonathan, and he was not put to death. Then Saul stopped pursuing the Philistines, and they withdrew to their own land. After Saul had assumed rule over Israel, he fought against their enemies on every side, Moab, the Ammonites, Edom, the kings of Zobah, and the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he inflicted punishment on them. He fought valiantly and defeated the Amalekites, delivering Israel from the hands of those who had plundered them. Saul's sons were Jonathan, Ishvi, and Maki. The name of his older daughter was Merab, and that of the younger was Michael. His wife's name was Ahinoam, daughter of Ahimaz. The name of the commander of Saul's army was Abner, son of Ner, and Ner was Saul's uncle. Saul's father Kish and Abner's father Ner were sons of Abel. All the days of Saul there was bitter war with the Philistines, and whenever Saul saw a mighty or brave man, he took him into his service. Now just a couple of remarks on this chapter. First, Jonathan was a very heroic individual. Jonathan and his armor bearer came up with this plan to personally attack the Philistines. And so he puts this proposition to his armor bearer that they can't avoid battle or combat. Either way, this proposition goes. But he says, if the Philistines come to us and say, wait till we come to you, we'll stay here and not go up to them. No, we'll fight them here if they want to come to us. But if they say, come up to us, we'll go up, and that'll be our sign. The Lord has given them into our hands. So either we're going to fight them here or we're going to fight them up there, but we're going to fight them either way. And so in that first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed 20 men, and a panic strikes the whole army. And the Bible says it was a panic sent by God. 
And so the Lord saved Israel. And Saul came out with a, an army pursuing the Philistines. And apparently Saul bound the people with an oath saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food before evening comes, uh, before I've avenged myself on my enemies. Now, this was a very foolish oath. Saul um, did this without good reason. You don't take an army that's in the midst of a battle and say you can't eat. You've got to fast. That's not the time to fast. So Jonathan didn't know anything about Saul's oath. He ate a little honey. And um, ultimately, this came to Saul's attention. And Saul publicly said he was going to kill Jonathan. He was going to cause him to be killed for breaking his oath. And the people rescued Jonathan out of Saul's hands, undermining Saul's authority. And it was very foolish on Saul's part. Everybody knew it was foolish. Jonathan said, my dad has behaved foolishly. He's made trouble for the country. It would have been better if everybody could have eaten. Then our victory would have been greater. But Saul was made the fool publicly as a result of this situation. Jonathan the hero, Saul the foolish king. And so it's a very sad state of affairs. There's one other note in this chapter that the the commander of Saul's army is his first cousin, Abner, son of Ner, and Ner was Saul's uncle. So uh, this Abner will become more of an important character as we move through 1 and 2 Samuel. But Lord, um, we just acknowledge Jonathan's great victory We acknowledge Jonathan's valor. Lord, we see that uh, Saul behaved foolishly. He's a very pitiable figure. Uh, We we feel sorry and bad for Saul, but he continues to do foolish things, undermining his own leadership and undermining his own relationship with the Lord. And so, God, um, uh, we ask that you would guide us. Lord, we may not be as heroic as Jonathan, But, Lord, we do pray we would not be as foolish as Saul. Help us, Lord, to avoid foolish oaths and uh, foolish commitments that are not part of your plan or part of your will. Help us, Lord, be people of discretion and wisdom and valor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.